Hello too. What you're looking at is, of course, the display of uh, a macOS environment. Today we're going to install Windows 10 on this Mac Pro 3.1. Let me show you current specifications so we can get up to speed. As you can see, this is a Mac Pro early 2008. We still have the dual quad-core 200 gigahertz CPUs, 20 gigabytes of RAM, ATI 5870, and we're currently running on a Full HD BenQ display on our workbench. Memory configuration is right there. And we're currently running macOS High Sierra 1013.6 because that is the latest version that will properly support the 5870, which we might swap out in a future video to make this a dedicated machine to run uh, Mojave on it. Especially now that um, macOS 11 is on the horizon, Big Sur. I really don't think that uh, there's going to be any trickery that's going to allow these machines to uh, run on that. Maybe Dust Dude 1 will find another way to uh, make a patcher for Big Sur for these old machines, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. I think this is the end of the line, maybe with macOS Catalina. But no worries, let's uh, actually go and do an installation here. So I've downloaded the installer. In case you don't know how to do that, you just go to your favorite uh, search engine. You type in Windows 10. I always use the ISO uh, there. And uh, it'll be the top download here. If you run a Windows PC, you also get the option to use the media creation tool. If you're running Linux or OS 10, go right here. Just pick your version. Confirm it. Select the language that you want to use. For instance, pick English here. And now you can pick the version you want, 32-bit or 64-bit. For a Mac Pro 3.1, you want to go with 64-bit version. And also make sure when you install the, the Windows operating system on your Mac to... Uh, let me just end it down here, by the way. You really want to make sure you install the Pro version. You don't need to do this if you're on a MacBook Pro or any other machine that only has one CPU. This does not count CPU cores, but actually physical CPUs. On a Mac Pro with dual CPU capabilities, you really want to run the Pro version or else you will only run one CPU at a time. And of course, that's a waste. So once you've downloaded it and burned it to a DVD, this will not work from a USB. Just go ahead and select it in your startup disk options and restart. And now we'll, we will find out if uh, it's happy enough to boot from this version. So this is the very latest version of Windows 10. This is 2004, released just a month ago. And uh, we'll see uh, if this machine likes it. There are a couple of options that we can uh, get the drivers running on this. We can either let Windows handle all of it. Another option is to use bootcamp drivers, but uh, they might not work correctly under 2004. So all I'm really after here is the bootcamp software, so you can easily switch between Windows and Mac OS. Any of the other options do not really apply. I really don't need to have the latest drivers that Apple has invented for this because Apple is always way behind on their drivers for Windows. So you might as well just let Windows itself handle all of the drivers and just install the bootcamp software so you can get a boot switcher. That's basically all I want to use it for anyway. So now we're also going to find out if it even wants to boot from this for the new version or whether we have to go back a few notches. Because booting from DVD on Windows is particularly slow, I'm just going to let it sit here for a little while. If it ends up not doing anything, I'll get back to you and uh, report with the version that does work. Alright, it is already time for Plan B. 2004 did not want to boot, so I burned an older copy. This is 1809. It had burned to a dual layer disk, so I hope I didn't waste an actual disk. The other ones I have are rewritable, but this one is only a recordable, so here goes nothing. Then we'll be able to upgrade it to 2004 later. Uh, 
that's already much better looking because with 2004 it immediately like disappeared and then it went like with the uh, blinking cursor on the top left so I've got some good hopes that uh, 1809 will actually boot and install so uh, that's what we're going for anyways as usual booting from a DVD Windows 10 actually usually takes a couple minutes so yeah I gotta make you wait through that we'll just wait for this to load and then uh, we'll continue as normal Windows is finally loaded. So let's pick our currency format. And install. This is just your typical Windows installation, it's really nothing special. We'll just go through it uh, as quickly as we can. DVD spinning up in the background. We'll skip the product key for now. And here is where it gets important. If you fill in a Windows 10 Pro key, it will automatically go to Windows 10 Pro. If your key is home, again, you will only be able to use one CPU. So we want Pro, Pro for workstations, or Pro Education, that doesn't really matter all that much. Whatever you have your license key for. And we'll just go with Pro here. see here what we have in terms of SSDs available. I was actually expecting to see my 60 gigabyte SSD which does not seem to be detected at the moment. We'll have a look in this part here. We only see a 120 gigabyte drive, which is the boot drive for High Sierra, and a 750 gig drive that actually has Windows Vista on it. Yeah, don't ask. Okay, so the disk that I want to install to is not really here, I see, so I'll correct that and uh, we'll go from there. All the other disks were taken out. As you can see now, we only have one disk, 120 gigabytes. In fact, let's clean it because I think it has some sort of Linux on it. So if you want to clean a disk, just open up disk part. Uh, disk part. There you go. Type in a list disk. So you can see which disks you have. Now we're going to select a disk. Select disk and the number. And then we're going to type clean. And in this case, you want to convert MBR. Because we're not going to be able to boot Windows in EFI mode, we have to format it as MBR. This also means that you cannot boot Windows on a Mac if it has a disk larger than 2 terabytes. At least you cannot make a volume that's bigger than 2 terabytes and install Windows on it and boot from it. That's just the limitation of MBR. But uh, that shouldn't be an issue because boot drives are typically a bit smaller than that, at least at this point in time. Again, no product key, pick Windows 10 Pro, and we should now have 120 gigabyte volume to install Windows on. And there we are. So we're going to create a new partition, hit OK. You don't need to do anything else about it. You can just click that and go from there. And now we just wait for Windows to install. It should take about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how fast your optical drive is. This is an old IDE drive, but at least it's a dual layer disk, so it might still be able to do about 10 to 15 megabytes per second transfer. So uh, yeah, just let it sit and uh, go from there from the first reboot. And about 7 minutes in, actually, so pretty fast, it's already ready to go and do a reboot. So let's let it go ahead and do just that. Now you can also see how fast it will boot on this uh, SID2 bus. It's just a random 128 gig SSD that I had laying around, so it's probably not all that fast, but hey, it works, right?
Now we go full power. And if we don't touch anything, it should boot into the second half of the installer procedure. There we go. Should be getting some dots actually. So that's weird. So it would appear that it actually shows the installer disk over the boot disk. Let's change that around. Good to hold down the option key. So get to the boot picker. There it is. We can see there is a Windows partition, so it has found it. I just need to eject both of the optical drives. It would appear that the top optical drive has some trouble ejecting at the moment. I guess we'll just hit Windows here and see if it boots at all. No signal detected. Well, that's not great, is it? This machine is having some weird issues running Windows today. I guess it's sacrilege running Windows on a Mac. So, you know, it is really not liking this. And all I need is to get the top optical drive open to get the disk out. But even that is proving challenging. Might have to end up just disconnecting the drive and go from there. There we go. There's the bastard. Okay. Because apparently picking it from the boot picker and then going straight into it doesn't give us a signal. So we'll just reboot the machine again. Let it figure it out on its own. There's nothing else for it to boot from, so it should go straight to the Windows disk. Alright, go straight to black. Should still give us an image shortly. Well, it is displaying an image, let's be fair. It's just heavily distorted one of that. That's definitely looking a bit better, isn't it? <laughs> right. Okay, the device is ready. By the way, this version of Windows, version uh, 1809, is going to be end of life very soon, or actually might already be. Now, I think it is one of those longer support releases, actually, so it might be, I think it's supported until about November this year of 2020. So yeah, if you're watching this video after November 2020, it is an end of life operating system, so if you install it, please uh, update it as soon as possible to a newer version once you're actually in the operating system and have gotten everything running because it's really a 
bad idea to run unsupported Windows. So yeah. So I guess we're going to have to wait for this to get ready. And once we're in operating system, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, the machine rebooted once more. And now it has booted up into Windows 10. So now we have to go through all of the basics. Let's see, I have US International Keyboard. Skip additional layouts. Now we have some important setting up settings to do whatever. Yeah, really. It's something I've always hated about Windows 10. Just you can't just install it, put in your username, and just go straight to the operating system. That's that's not how it works, apparently. It just makes you go through all of these weird-ass configuration screens. I just don't get it. One thing I'm also not getting is the fact that it uh, appeared to uh, have needed another reboot. It's probably fine. Can't say I've actually properly installed Windows 10 on this machine before. I mean, I've said it before, I do I have owned an actual Mac Pro 3.1 a couple of years ago, and uh, I ran Windows 7 on that, and that was just a way easier thing to do. Just put in the DVD, just let it run, and sold the bootcamp drivers directly from Apple's website, and it was all done. But that does not work with Windows 10. No, it does not. It just keeps getting more difficult to run on a machine like this. Which is weird, because you can install Windows 10 current version on the Pentium 4 hyper-threading, like, just fine, as long as it has the proper instructions. Uh, let's see, organization. Let me join instead, this way we can get around using a Microsoft account. Put in my name, no password. that. Get it on my face. Nope. <laughs> Screw you. Like, that's just insane, isn't it? Just have it go through all of those screens just so you can get into the operating system. And even then, it's, it's greeting you with the fact that it's not even done yet. Well, that's just great. That's properly amazing. Now done with low-key racism there. Hmm. And now we have to wait several minutes in order for Windows to configure itself so we can uh, get on with it and see what kind of drivers we will actually need to find somewhere, whether it will be able to pick up uh, most of everything. I do have my Snow Leopard DVD handy for the very basic uh, early bootcamp software. This is bootcamp 2 or 3, I think, 3 which is the bare minimum you really need and will actually install without modification. So we'll see if that's enough for us to at least get the boot picker. In fact, for a fact, I know that it will because the other SSD that I have actually has 1903 on it and it was fine on that, so. In fact, so let me get it. That's the SSD that's actually right here. It's a 60 gigabyte Corsair, I think. Corsair Force LS. Low end name brand SSD. I think it has video driver. Or oh, is it it? Good. All right. So here we are in Windows 10, 1809. Let's open up device manager here. As we can see, there are no exclamation marks at all. Graphics are detected as Radeon HD 5800 series. It's an older driver in 2015, but that should be fine. Our network adapters, we have two Intel Pro 1000 NICs. They, uh, they have built-in drivers. We have a Broadcom wireless driver that's also built in. All of our CPU cores are detected. That's also something to check if you go to system. It should say two processors right here. And it does. 
It says Intel Xeon CPU E5462 and has two processors. That is a very good indication that both of your physical CPUs have been detected properly. And if we change the graph to the logical processor, we can see we have eight cores here. So all of them are detected. 20 gigs of RAM are detected. We have two gigabytes in use. So all of that is hunky-dory. And we have a perfectly working Windows desktop now. So again, let's install the bootcamp software. For this run, I'm going to be using the OS X Snow Leopard DVD. And of course, the keyboard shortcut is not working. So in order to eject the super drives, we have to go here, right click and say eject. All right. Put in the disk, wait for it to load up. For those of you unfamiliar with uh, Mac OS X DVDs on a Windows computer, there is a small par partition basically on the CD that has all of the Windows software. So that's the only part that you will actually see in Windows. You will not be able to see any of the Mac stuff. You'll only see the bootcamp partition of the disk. It also contains the uh, DVD sharing software, which you can use on a Mac that does not have an optical drive. You put in a disk on a machine like this, you share it, and you'll be able to use that disk on another Mac. All right, so it does not detect your operating system properly. That's fine, we have solutions for that. We have the compatibility tab here, which we'll is put it to Windows Vista. Run it again, and it should open just fine. Because Windows Vista is the earliest version of drivers that uh, Windows 10 can still talk to as of uh, filming this video. XP used a different driver model, which is now commonly known as the XPDM, XP driver model. And uh, this time up used WDDM drivers, or Windows driver model. And for the display drivers, that was X, or it was actually Windows display driver model, I think it was. It's been a while. We, we don't want that because it doesn't actually work anymore. Not on Windows 10 in, anyway. So we'll just run the installer so it can update its drivers wherever it needs to do so. I guess, because there's absolutely nothing on that DVD that is newer driver-wise than what's already on the system. It's mostly software that needs to install, so we're just going to let this run, and uh, once that's completed, we'll verify that the bootcamp software is up and running and that we can see the different uh, boot drives. In fact, I think we should be able to see the uh, I see our partition again. If I didn't do something terrible somewhere, the system will yank in the drives out. But we'll find out in a bit. So yeah, I guess we'll just uh, let this run for a bit and uh, we'll come back after it's done. And bootcamp software is done. All right. Wants us to reboot. So we did install a couple things. First of all, it enabled Bluetooth, which was not working before. It enabled the internal speaker, which was not working before. And uh, it installed the bootcamp software. So let's see if we can dig it up somewhere. Or whether it's not initialized quite yet. Okay, it does not appear just yet. So we'll just go ahead and do a reboot, and then we'll go from there. And once we're through that, I guess uh, we'll go for the big one, upgrade it to 2004, and see if it still works, if it still boots, and all that jazz. Because this is a good workaround to just install 1809 and then run the updater again from within Windows to get a newer version running, and that's just fine. It just takes another half an hour depending on your download speed. It's usually about five to ten minutes download if you have a hundred megabit connection. And then you gotta wait about half an hour for it to do its magic and then reboot 
wait another while and it should be fine. So yeah, it is a bit concerning that it's doing this. It's only doing this on the display port, I think. But that's fine. As long as it works. Boot up is pretty quick for a system this old. Does not even have SATA 3. And a weird Chinese Xeno SSD. But yeah. So the bootcamp software is in fact now available. So we can put it in the notification center there. And here it is. We can see the Mac OS 10 install DVD. Of course, we cannot see the disk we booted from. So uh, the boot picker is also working from in here. Okay, so I guess I'm going to put it to the test now. Get the latest version of Windows and do an in place upgrade here. Again, like before. Just type in Windows 10 ISO. Except this time we're not going to download the full ISO, we're going to run update now. It will download the upgrade assistant, which is run it. There we go. Can click yes there. And now we're going to see if this system can be upgraded. All right, this PC is compatible. We'll go from there. And now it is. Whoops, sorry about that. It is going to download the latest version of Windows 10, 2004 at the time of filming, and uh, once it's done preparing, it'll ask us to go do a reboot, then it's going to upgrade our existing installation to the newer version. We're just going to let this sit, as before, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm really interested to see if this is actually going to work, I have no idea, so it uh, should be interesting. Okay. Once the process is done, it will now ask us to reboot the Mac, so let's go and do that. We're about to be signed out, that's fine. And now we just have to sit and wait. It should reboot in about 30 seconds to a minute uh, worth of time, so... There it goes. And now once again we have to wait for it to boot up. And once it does, the upgrade process should start. which takes a while to post. No distortion this time. Wait for it to boot up again. There it goes. And now it's going to sit on, at, uh, at this screen for a little while. It should perform the upgrade. If it comes back with some kind of error in the, in the middle of the upgrade, you'll have to do some troubleshooting steps in order to uh, work around that, because there might be something that's that has ended up being incompatible with your uh, system or with uh, Windows 10 2004. That's not part of the scope of this video. We're just doing a clean install and upgrade to get the latest version running on this to see if it's even possible. Because some people tend to uh, believe that 1809 is the end of the road for the majority of the older uh, Intel Macs. So I guess this video will prove or uh, disprove that statement. For the time being, let's just uh, let, it, let it do its thing. And once we're finished, or once we run into a problem, I'll uh, Get the camera back out and we'll see what happens.
it is about 30 minutes later now and uh, installation has succeeded as you can see it tells us that uh, they're being thankful for upgrading to the latest version of Windows 10 if you go to the run dialog here and type in winver we can confirm our current OS version which is indeed version 2004 so we're now running the very latest version of Windows 10 on this old Mac Pro if you get up the system dialog again it's still the very same uh, computer here 2.8 gigahertz dual CPU and it appears to be working fine so we can even go and get some updates you always need some updates and our bootcamp software here in the bottom right is in fact still working here it says bootcamp version 3.0 it's still the very old version that we installed from a Snow Leopard DVD. And so if I still starts up in order for us to select a different operating system to boot from. Here it sees we have a Snow Leopard DVD, which is correct. So uh, everything appears to be fine. It even didn't bring up uh, a whole of a lot of updates. So let's go to Device Manager and see how things are doing there, if we've lost anything on the way. Wouldn't appear to be the case. We still have the same video driver. We still have the same network drivers for everything. And everything still appears to be working. We can even browse the Wi-Fi networks here. So even Wi-Fi is working, that's good. And of course our Bluetooth is working. So yeah. It even detects the Intel SSD that has the Mac OS X on it currently. So everything appears to be in order. So that was basically us installing Windows 10, the very latest version, 2004, on a 3.1 Mac Pro, 2008. Unfortunately, we did have to resort to installing 18.09 first, which is the last version I think that you can boot into without any problems. And uh, once we've done that and installed the bootcamp software, we were able to install 2004 just fine. No problems along the way. Just had to wait for a little while. And... Uh, we're now on the very latest version of Windows as of uh, the time of filming this. So, despite everyone saying that 1809 is the last version that you can run on many of the older Macs, I think we've proven the opposite. It will work just fine, especially on desktop Macs. Obviously, there might be some other complications or caveats when you're running on a laptop, for instance, a MacBook or a MacBook Pro. You might have some different drivers and functionality that might not be available once you run Windows on it in these newer versions. But uh, as far as Mac Pros are concerned, it would appear to be just fine. I would expect to this version to run just fine as well on a uh, earlier Mac Pro, like the 1.1 or 2.1. Uh, if you can find a version that does not bring up that uh, dialog where you have to pick between 32 and 64-bit, there are some version that, uh, ways, I think, to work around that, so it will always boot to 64-bit version uh, regardless. And I don't see any other problems uh, from there either. In fact, I think, because Windows 10 is pretty uh, easy on hardware changes, you could probably, if you have the opportunity of installing it in a different system, just move the SSD over to another Mac, boot off of it just fine, it will reconfigure itself. So yeah, that is basically Windows 10 on the 3.1 2008 Mac Pro. Hope you enjoyed the video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.